Glenda was a grumpy and unhappy woman who always hated her youngest son, Joe Winko, for many reasons. She was always annoyed by his bubbly and outgoing personality, and his witty jokes that he'd always tell, which she would never find funny. He always was known for dressing in loud, red or pink flamboyant clothing, which always humiliated Glenda whenever she went out in public with them. Every time Glenda had guests over for dinner, Joe would always talk to them and literally dominate the whole conversation. He'd always brag about how well he was at playing video games, how he was an expert at hula hooping, how many likes he had on his Facebook fan page, or even his subscribers on YouTube. But what Glenda hated the most about her son was his eyes. To this day, she still remembers them. They were bright green, like emeralds. Everyone in her family, including herself, had black or plain colored eyes. Joe's older siblings were even jealous of him because of this. All Glenda thought about was Joe's eyes. How shiny, bright, and dazzling they were. She'd always ask herself, Where did he get those eyes? Why did he get those eyes? She would then become angry. He's such a disgrace to me and my family. I wish I would have never brought him into this world. He doesn't belong here anymore, she'd snare to herself. Her rage would build even stronger every time she thought of Joe's eyes. Joe woke up that warm summer morning, wearing nothing but a pair of red shorts, his silver metal bracelet, and a bright yellow wristband along with his Native American arrowhead necklace. He stepped inside the bathroom and stood in front of the mirror. Figuring that he needed a new Facebook picture, Joe pulled out his iPod Touch and took a picture of himself standing in front of the mirror. Little did he know, this would be the last picture of him ever taken, besides his autopsy photos. After making his way downstairs, he sat at the kitchen table, where he noticed a bowl full of cereal. Standing ahead of him at the sink was his mother, Glenda. She was dressed in a pink robe and had her back turned towards him while she was washing the dishes. Good morning, Mom! Joe spoke in his typical, cheerful voice. Hi, Glenda snared at him, softly. Thanks so much for making me a bowl of cereal. It's my favorite, too. Fruit Loops. Glenda felt herself becoming very annoyed. She snared back at him. Yeah, whatever, Joe. Joe dipped his spoon into the cereal and started eating a couple spoonfuls of it. To his surprise, it had a slightly unusual taste. But he ignored it and swallowed it anyway. But then, out of nowhere, he felt an excruciating pain in his gut. It felt like his intestines were being twisted and ripped apart inside. His whole body started quivering and his heart began thumping, fast, and unnaturally hard. Veins bulged out of his skin, which had quickly faded to a deathly pale color. Without control, Joe started retching, his blood drained out of his eyes and out of his nose. Blood then shot out of Joe's mouth as he fell to the floor, quivering. Glenda then turned around and stared down at her son 
as he lied on the floor, twitching and coughing up large amounts of blood. The once energetic and lively young man was now on the floor, with his skin faded to gray, and his lips and face dried up to flakes of dead skin. His eyes were bulging, which used to be bright green, were now stained with bloodshots and tears. Joe finally found enough strength to speak. M -m -m Mom, help me. Ooh, what's happening to me? Glenda's smile grew even wider. I thought Fruit Loops were your favorite, Joe. She spoke in a gesture voice. You always bragged about it all the time. More blood cascaded out of Joe's mouth. His voice grew weaker and more faint. Why won't... Why won't you help me? He spoke through his intense pain and streaming tears combined with his blood. Glenda grinned and spoke in a calm, optimistic voice. Because, sweetie, you are what you eat. Nothing but a waste of blood and guts that makes everyone around you sick. But now, it's our lucky day. We won't ever have to deal with you again. Glenda then let out a long, evil, and eerie laugh which echoed through Joe's mind. Joe made one last retching noise with his mouth and spat out a quart of blood along with pieces of his internal organs. He then stopped twitching and lied there on the kitchen floor, silent and still. Joe's body was later taken to a morgue that morning. An autopsy was performed, but the coroner said that Joe had died from an unusual chemical meltdown in his body, yet there was no trace of anything found in his corpse. His death was ruled out to be a natural cause, and the case was closed without any further investigation pursued. After everyone forgot about Joe's tragic death, many people began to notice how jolly and cheerful Glenda had become.